Alrighty guys, this is Alan recording another comprehensive Magic of the Gathering Arena draft video. Um, don't have enough gems to do Kaldheim, but I did save up 5k gold, so we'll be doing another bot draft in the meantime, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, I guess this isn't over for Zendikar Rising. We get to squeeze in maybe one or two more quick drafts in before it's over. And then hopefully I can get up to seven wins to pay for a Kaldheim draft. Which, you know, I'm pretty familiar with already since I've done a lot of sealed at LGS's. And, um, yeah, I've just done a couple of drafts at F&M's too in local game stores. So, uh, did, did a lot of, um, play a lot of uh, magic in paper as opposed to online. But here we're just going to fire off another Zendikar Rising draft. Even though it's not a current set, it's by far, I think, a lot more, um, a lot more, um, and a, it's, it's a lot more difficult to draft compared to, um, um, say, um, um, Kaldheim. Kaldheim, I feel like the, a lot of the commons are definitely, um, underpowered, or some of the uncommons and rares are kind of underpowered, so typically speaking, there's, it's very easy to kind of pinpoint the ty type of cards that you can pick, uh, whereas in the Car Rising, there's a lot of multiple archetypes which are excellent. Um, there's a lot of great commons, a lot of great uncommons and rares. So it's a lot more difficult to kind of navigate to um, know what to pick um, within a pack. Um, so yeah, um, I think Kaldheim is a lot more easier to draft and there's some archetypes that aren't as good. But here we're just going to fire off another bot draft here and uh, get started. So yep. Yeah. We should have enough time since this is bot draft and not premiere. And pack one, pick one, premiere draft. Um, Zendikar Rising, we opened up a pretty strong rare. Inscription of Abundance is quite powerful. Just five mana to kick this isn't too difficult. And what you can do is that you can grow a creature with two counters, gain life um, equal to the greatest power among creatures you control, and then you can also use this to fight a creature. So it's a pretty excellent two for one. You can grow your creature and also fight one away. And uh, this is also instant speed, so even if you don't have 5 mana, you can pay this for 2 mana, you can sometimes ambush your opponent, so this is definitely an excellent first pick. Another excellent first pick in this pack, I call this the Mythic Uncommon, being Thwart the Grave. Um, black, I think, is the best color in Zendikar Rising, since they have all the great removal spells at common, and Thwart the Grave is just a gross 2 for 1 in the late game. Um, it does get better the more party members that you have, but honestly... Even if you aren't drafting a party deck, this is mostly a late game oriented card anyways. Um, so you are more interested in playing this in the late game where when most of your creatures have died and then you can just reanimate them and bring both onto the battlefield, um, which is very good. Um, that being said, um, I think it's still the Inscription of Abundance. Um, if um, we do end up in green-black, hopefully we can pick up like a Thor to Grave at Uncommon later. But this would be a pretty excellent first pick. So, I mean, I really think it's really preference here, honestly, between these two. I think Thor to Grave is really that powerful. Um, if, you, if you do end up drafting black and uh, definitely um, uh, kind of close in power level um, to Inscription, since this is already a great two-for-one. Um, and But uh, Inscription, I think... Haven't drafted green in a long time, and uh, yeah, I haven't played this card yet, so um, I think I'll take it here, and then hopefully we can end up in some sort of a uh, nice green uh, deck. So yeah. After first picking Inscription of Abundance, what goes well with it? Nothing amazing in green. Had we taken the Thwart the Grave, we would have a pretty interesting option between the creatures here. Sure for the Infiltrator for the Blue-Black Rogues deck. Tazim Mage can get back the um, Thwart the Grave. And then Shepherd of Heroes, also a pretty excellent party card. So unfortunately, nothing amazing in um, with our first pick here. We could just take a Tazim Mage. Like, I believe the Blue-Green Kicker is one of the best archetypes in this set as well. And this is a nice way to get back the Inscription of Abundance. Abundance. So this is a pretty nice common to pick up. Of course, if we're going to be playing Blue Green Kicker, our deck is going to be quite mana intensive. So we have to keep that in mind as well. And both of these cards are quite excellent too, but uh, goes in very specific decks. I don't think Green can do the party thing too well. So Shepherd of Heroes is not going to overperform uh, as opposed to something in another two color combinations in white. Since Green really cares about Landfall and Kicker more than party, um, yeah, the Shepherd Hero is just going to be very okay. And the Infiltrator is much more better in a blue black committed rogues deck. So had I taken the Thor to Grave, maybe I'd still be taking the Tazim Royal Mage here, since this can get back Thor to Grave. 
Um, but yeah, I can see all these other two cards being excellent. I can end up in some sort of black-white clerics deck with a nice party sub-theme, or a blue-black rogues deck with a bit of a party sub-theme to uh, go along with the Thor to Grave. But I think to see Royal Mage would, would still be my pick, so I think I'll take it here. Um, these other two uncommons are okay, but not exciting. So we'll take the Royal Mage. Hopefully we end up in the blue-green kicker deck. And what do we have here? Could just take a second to Zim Royal Mage. Um, there's also a Rock Slide Sorcerer in case um, green isn't as open. Um, we could end up drafting Blue Red Wizards, which um, is um, a, an archetype that I haven't um, 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 played with as much so far. Um, then we could take another Tazim Royal Mage, which would probably be my pick over Vastwood Fortification, although both of them are quite good. The Vastwood Fortification, nice Moldal Face Land. You can sometimes catch your opponent off guard by putting a counter onto one of your creatures and growing it and ambushing it, and it can also be casted as a land. And then the Tazim Royal Mage again can get back the Inscription of Abundance. I mean, it's not like I want to abandon my Inscription of Abundance. Um, but there's a chance that green isn't as open, and I could just take the Rock Slide Sorcerer, which is a lot more of a high-risk, high-reward type of pick. Because, um, I mean, there's a chance, again, green isn't as open, and we might abandon green and go into red. And then, in that case, the Rock Slide Sorcerer would be excellent, since we already took a Tazim Royal Mage. And given that Tazim Royal Mage is that common, even if we do end up in the blue-green kicker deck, I think we will eventually get a second one, since the bots don't seem to respect them since they're getting passed. So I think I'll take the Rock Slide Sorcerer here and speculate in case the Blue-Green Kicker deck isn't open. And maybe we can end up drafting some sort of Blue-Red Wizard deck, which um, I haven't showcased too much so far. So yeah, this card's quite excellent. Let's take it here. Um, okay, again, nothing amazing in green. A fine fight spell, but better than a much more aggressive deck. Uh, and then these two cards are pretty much bad. Um, so yeah, it doesn't seem like maybe... Um, green is as open we could take a cinderclasm here i mean if we do end up in the blue red wizards we could be a little bit more controlling and it's nice just having a nice um instant spell that can maybe sometimes wipe the whole board and this can be a uh, quite powerful and then hopefully we can pick enough creatures with enough toughness to survive the cinderclasm otherwise other these these other cards are okay if we want to pivot into some sort of some sort of party deck we could take like sea floor stalker expedition champion or synchronized spellcraft but overall, yeah, this, this pack doesn't look very exciting, so I'll take the Cinderclasm, and maybe we end up in some sort of red control deck, which can be kind of fun. Again, nothing amazing green. This time, nothing amazing blue or red either. So, yeah, um, what do we take here? Um, the white cards are pr pretty medium. I don't think we're a life gain deck a party deck in white, so I don't really think these are um, fantastic. I could just speculate on a Ravager's Mace. Um, maybe we do end up in just a red-black party deck again, since we do have a couple of red cards. So this is kind of what Ben Stark calls drafting the hard way, where um, your first pick and your second pick don't really align with the next couple of picks since the colors are a bit cut off. Um, and yeah, it's I think this is a lot more challenging, a lot more fun in my opinion, compared to just first picking a broken uh, green rare and then picking second picking like another broken card that can go along with it. So I think I'll take the Ravager's Mace here. Spare Supplies is fine, but again, this pack is just horrendous. So maybe we just end up in Black Red Party. So a lot of multiple archetypes. So we're not seeing Wizards here, unfortunately. Where we do see a Balagate Recovery, which is a good card. Um, some of these red cards are good. There's also Scion of the Swarm, uh, which is best in the Black White Life Gain deck, but can be also fine in the uh, Black Red Party deck. Um, so yeah, it doesn't seem like... I mean, so if I take the green card here, what happens? Then maybe we're setting up for red-green, I suppose, which I don't think we have a good setup for a red-green deck, unfortunately. Um, none of these blue cards are exciting. So I think it's the black and the red cards here. And which one do we prefer? Typically speaking, in black-red, black-white, black-red um, party, there's not a lot of life gain, so the sign of the swarm isn't going to overperform unless you pick up multiple Malakir Blood Priest. So I'm not sure if I even want to take the Scion here. It can be a nice Curve Topper that can maybe serve as an invasive threat. Uh, otherwise, maybe just take a Teeter Peak Ambusher as a good 2-drop. And it does survive the um, Cinderclasm, so it's pretty decent here. Um, there's also Reclaim the Waste, which I forgot to mention about. But again, I don't think green is as open as it seems. Um, unfortunately, we didn't see any amazing green cards. This is like the first good green card we've seen so far, and it's only a land. So, not sure here. Maybe we just do end up in Red Black Party, seeing the late Ravager's Mace, seeing the late Scion of the Swarm. Um, and again, I don't think Red does play too well with um, with 
life gain, so I don't think the Scion of the Swarm is going to be very good. So I think we can just take a good 2-drop here, since the Teeter Peak Ambusher is pretty excellent in the Black Red Party decks, and it does survive Cinderclasm. It's not a Wizard for a Rock Slide Sorcerer, but maybe we can pick up Wizards later. We could end up also in Red Green Party, maybe, or Red Blue Party, potentially, but uh, again, I don't like Red Green Party too much. Blue Red does better with Wizards, but it's still possible being in the party deck, so let's just take a Teeter Peak Ambusher here. Maybe just speculate on Black Red Party. Yeah, and a late Grotag Night Runner. Not a bad 3-drop. Can um, serve as a rogue for the party deck. And also, if this can start connecting, it can just generate some card advantage in the late game, which is quite important. So not a bad card. I don't think it's an amazing card. I think it's solid, slightly above average, but not super fantastic. And if this was in pack, maybe Subtle Strike is a good combat trick. Could work. Um, Blight Blade is fine, but we'll just take a Night Runner. So, okay, no respect for the Black Red Party deck. A lot of good Black Red cards. So, yeah, I think we're not going to be in the Blue Red Wizards or Blue Green Kicker or any Green Red Landfall cards here. So, I think we're going to stick with the Black Red Party deck. Um, and now, in this pack, what do we want to take? Um, this is kind of our curve right now. Um, how good is Expedition Skulker? We have a Night Runner for it, which is fine. Could speculate on the Goma Fat of Vanguard, but I feel like this card is a lot better if you have a lot more Warriors in the deck, which red can sometimes or sometimes not do, but it's not, I don't think it's super fan fantastic. I could take my first copy of Sneaking Guide, which is a solid one drop. It does play well with the Night Runner and the Teeter Peak Ambusher, and it's also Rogue I can cast on turn one, and also keeps in red, so I, I could just take the Sneaking Guide. It does seem to have some good synergy with both of these creatures, so I might just take it here. I feel like Goma Fat Vanguard's better if you're going all in in some sort of red white warriors deck. Of course, it can be okay in party, but usually it could just get uh, um, stonewalled later by um, a creature since it does have to attack in order to make a creature unable to block. So I'm not too high on this. Um, Expedition Skulker could also be pretty good if we pick up enough rogues, but I think I'd rather have my first copy of Sneaking Guide since it just plays well with what we currently have. So I'll take it here. And again, nothing too important. I guess in case we pivot out of um, Black Red Party, uh, we could end up in maybe some sort of um, Red White Party deck. And we could take the Angel Heart Protector, which is nice since it's aggressively skewed. A uh, Red Blue Party, I don't even like the Cleric, to be honest, which could be fine, but I feel like uh, our creatures want to be a lot more aggressive, even in. I think Red wants to be aggressive, so. Um, I mean, I guess Red Blue can also be controlling at times with the Cinderclasm, so the Cleric could be fine, but overall it does get passed. Could take the Cleansing Wildfire in case I want to splash, but. We'll just take an Angel Heart Protector in case we do end up in red-white somehow. And uh, I could use two copies of Sneaking Guide. Can be fine. Hopefully, uh, I mean, we could run maybe 16 lands with Sneaking Guide. Since this is a pretty small creature, it can die pretty easily and is not too impactful when it enters the battlefield. Since it's not a very good attacker or blocker. So the, I could play two copies or one. But um, two copies could be okay if I go 16 lands. So I'll try it here. And then nothing here that matters. Maybe just take an Uncommon for the Vault. I'd rather play Scavenging Knife over this since it's too expensive to equip and Scavenging Knife's Knife hits a lot harder. And okay, a pretty light Expedition Champion. Pretty nice since we do have a Warrior to go along with it. So hopefully we can pick up enough 2-drop Warriors. And Expedition can be a nice 4-mana, 3-mana, 4-2. And then I'll take a Cleansing Wildfire if I want to. And yeah, not bad. Nice uh, red party deck we're kind of gearing up to be. Um, so yeah, luckily that we read the signals. Otherwise, I think this draft would have been a train wreck. So had we taken the Thwarted Grave, we would have been in better shape. Since we would have a nice reanimation spell to go along with as opposed to Inscription of Abundance. Since our first two picks aren't making the deck. Um, however, yeah, sometimes in draft you just kind of have to speculate and take a gamble, I suppose, and sometimes you get re rewarded, sometimes you don't. But, you know, I'm not psychic, um, and even the best drafters aren't psychic, so, um, sometimes you do miss out, but, in, but sometimes, uh, if you can pick up the signals early, then you can save your draft, and that's usually what's important. So, let's move on, maybe draft a nice red party deck. This card's very good, had we, um, if green was open in our first pack... This would be um, our definitely our slime pick, uh, pack two, pick one, to go along with the Inscription of Abundance. Unfortunately, again, I don't think green, uh, red is a good party. It's, it's trying, to do, uh, trying to do party too much. It's trying to mostly do landfall, which Ashaya is mostly trying to do. I think it's just an easy Blood Chief's Thirst. Uh, and again, I think black, red party is where you want to be in the red party deck since it's going to have the most open variety of uh, party members for us. And uh, it's going to have the most synergy. 
problem. So I'm going to take a Bloodshed Stirs as an excellent removal spell. Can cast this early or later, so definitely going to be the pick here. Otherwise, the rest of this pack doesn't look exciting. Um, okay, this pack is also not looking very exciting. I could take my first copy of Subtle Strike. I could also speculate on Blue-Red Wizards with the Amaro Mystic, although we don't have a lot of Wizards. So unfortunately, it's probably just a Subtle Strike here, or I can Rare Draft. But I don't really care about Omnath. I think I should have enough wild cards eventually to purchase everything. Let's just take a subtle strike. Nice interaction spell. Can make combat a nightmare for the opponent. Um, okay, I don't mind a Goma Fat at Vanguard now that I took an Expedition Champion. And we do need some Warriors on turn 2 to kind of curve out with, so I could take this. Otherwise, Spike Field Hazard could be okay. Could take an Inordinate Rage, another late Expedition Champion. I don't know if I would play two copies of Subtle Strike. Best card in this pack is probably the Soaring Thought Thief. Um, and I prefer that definitely over Maddening Cacophony. Maddening Cacophony could be fine if it get passed later and you're ready in the blue-black mill deck. But typically speaking, there's enough mill at common to enable mill that you don't need a spell that just mills. you rather have something that maybe develop the board or kill something or tap something down. And in this case, Destroying Thought Thief is a lot better. But we'll take a Fanguard here. Maybe we can be slightly skewed towards Warriors. Um, here, there's another Night Runner. Could just take a Fissure Wizard to have a nice two-drop uh, wizard. But we can usually pick up these later. Don't mind a second Grotog Nightrunner, um, although we do have a bunch of rogues already. Um, three rogues, three warriors, one wizard, one cleric. So I could see the case of maybe taking the Fissure Wizard, although, again, these tend to wheel, so it's not like we need them. So I think it's just a second Nightrunner here. The Nima Sky Dancer could also give us a little bit of evasion, but one toughness is not as good as it seems. There's a Pair Tactician if we want to just convert into Red White Warriors, but I think we're still fine sticking with Red. I'll just take the Night Runner for now. And Malkir Blood Priest, pretty late. Excellent two drop. Although those are Stonework Pack Beasts, but I still think it's the Blood Priest since it can do a ton of damage if we're able to get a, a good amount of party members assemble and drain. There's also Relic Amulet, so it's a sign that Blue Red Wizards is open from my left hand side, but honestly, again, we're better in Black Red Party. Pack Beast would be pretty good, but yeah, I could use another extra Cleric, and this can just. This has a lot more upside than the Stonework Pack Beasts, so I think I'll take it here. And then maybe I can just take a random Skitter Sneak, although it's a pretty clunky 4-drop. And uh, it's better off in the blue-black mill deck, so maybe I take a Tormenting Voice in case I don't have enough removal. I mean, card draw. I don't think we're switching to green with Rabbit Bites, um, since it wasn't open in our first pack and we were kind of cut off. So I could just take the Tormenting Voice. And we don't have a lot of uh, card advantage, so I could use one in case we don't pick up a Blood Price or um, a Blood or blood Beckoning later. Farsight Adept is fine, but I think we're sticking with Black Red, so we'll take a Tormenting Voice here. And yes, yeah, Scorch Rider, definitely upgrade and improvement over the Monastir Sneak, and also better than the Vampire um, Warrior on turn 4, since this has the ability to kick and gain haste. So yeah, let's pick it here. Okay, now I can just take a nice 3-drop Priest, since I do have two Sneaking Guides already. I'm low on Wizards, so I'm not so sure how Rock Slide Sorcerer is going to perform. But if we do pick up enough Instants and Sorceries, it can still be okay. But we'll just take a, a Marauding Blight Priest for now. Even though we don't have a lot of Synergy with it, it still serves as a solid um, party member for the deck. And yeah, the bot's not respecting the Sneaking Guides. And yeah, we'll just take another um, Expedition Champion. Hopefully we can pick up an inorn Inornate Rage later. Because these do add up. Honestly, I think it can overperform if we have a ton of these. And yeah, we'll take a 2-drop Wizard finally. So it even wields. So happy that I took the Night Runner here. And then, yeah, I don't think we're playing any of these. So yeah, what could the deck use? We could use a little bit more better removal. Hopefully we can pick up Deadly Alliances or Vanquish the Weak next pack. Maybe we need we could use a Blood Beckoning, some more Wizards to go along with Rock Slide Sorcerer. And we, maybe we can shave some of uh, these three drops, which are looking kind of clunky. So we'll see. And what do we open? Okay, Deadly Alliance, perfect. Could use a good removal spell. Otherwise, I think this is pack one, pick one, honestly. And the second best card is like Adventurer, and then third is like Tazim Roll Mage, and if I want to force red, blue, I go Umara Wizard. But yeah, this is just a clear Deadly Alliance here. Um, and then yeah, don't know what we can wheel out of that pack, but it doesn't look very exciting. Uh, I don't think we need another 4-drop, could just take a nice Expedition Skulker on turn 2. And yeah, we do have a couple of rogues to go along with it, so this is probably going to gain Death Touch. There's also Cargan War Leader um, being passed to me, so it's a sign that Red White is open. But again, after taking Deadly Alliance, Chief's Thirst, and then Malakir Blood Priest, I think we're settled with Black Red here, which does seem fairly open. So yeah, we'll take a Skulker. 
And uh, yeah, but Catcher's Excellence could use one of these. Plays pretty well the Sneaking Guide, can deal a ton of damage if we can get a full party assembled. Um, so we could use a little bit more Wizards and a little bit more Clerics. But this is going to be the pick here, for sure. Another Warrior being passed. Yeah, and I could use a good Curve Topper like the Sign of the Swarm. Again, not too much life gain, but we could use a Flying Creature at the top end. And yeah, it's another Cleric to go along with the deck. Has Synergy of the Malachar Blood Priest. Not so much of our other cards, but it could be okay. So we'll take it here. And yeah, Thundering Spark Mage is excellent. Um, it's funny how this card is a wizard, but usually in blue-red wizards it's not too good. Um, since it needs a diverse party member to dish out a ton of damage when it enters the battlefield. But it's kind of perfect. We are missing a 4-drop slot. We could use another wizard to go along with the Rock Slide Sorcerer. And yeah, it can just enter the battlefield and just um, deal damage right away. So nice. it's a nice creature for the party and also deal, and it's also a removal spell in one. So yeah, just perfect. So I love seeing this late. And we'll take an Electromancer. Thank, thank God it's finally here. Although, we could take a Synchronized Spellcraft, but this is kind of clunky and it's been um, underperforming. I think the Wizard makes sense here, and we can maybe shave one of our 3-drops in the deck. So um, so our deck doesn't get too clunky if we pick up enough playables. But yeah, this is a great card, excellent card in the party deck, just providing us a ton of mana and ramp to uh, get to the late game and curve out with. So this card seems pretty good. Um, 3 Clerics... Three wizards, six warriors, five rogues. So yeah, we could use another wizard. Electromancer seems good here. And then, um, do I take a Sizzling Barrage? I don't think we're taking a Highborn Vampire. Honestly, I don't think it's very good. Let's just take a Sizzling Barrage in case we don't have any more removal. And yeah, I could use an Inor Rage. Although Seagate Colossus could be okay as a solid curve topper for the deck. Um, and we do have a diverse cast of party members. Um, only three clerics though, but we don't really need a full party to really make this deck work. We can just usually um, do away with, um, we don't need like a million party members. So I could see cutting the Marauding Blight Priest. The Seagate Colossus could give us another decent top end finisher. Um, how many finishers do we have? We do have some late game with the Sneaking Guide and the Grotag Bug Catcher combo. I mean, it has to be better than Inordinate Rage, right? Um, let's see, one, two, I mean, one, two, maybe three, four removal spells. Inorin Rage could also be okay in the deck, just as a fine, cheap pump trick. And, you know, in that way, if we take this, maybe we can go 16 lands, because a card like Seagate Colossus might want us to go maybe 17 lands, since it's kind of expensive. And it would require us to have, like, maybe a, the Bl Blight Priest in the deck, unfortunately, since... Even though it doesn't have any synergy, um, we might need that early cleric to curve out with. Um, so what do we have in the early game? A couple of rogues, a cleric, a wizard, a warrior. Okay, um, So, but we only have one cleric. Uh, so we're mostly full of warriors and rogues in the early game. Yeah, we also don't have a ton of wizards, so it's not going to be easy cranking this out. So I think it's going to be in the ornate, in ornate Rage here. We might just have enough creatures to just attack that we don't need a card like Seagate Colossus. And you know, Inner Rage can be, can be a fine removal spell in our 16th card. Don't know if we're going to play second Fissure Wizard, um, but the one toughness is problematic. Maybe we just play Scorch Rider over the Arden Electromancer. Who knows? And our Teeter Peak Ambusher can maybe make the cut. We'll see. Triple Teeter Peak Ambusher might seem too excessive, so probably not the, the pick here. And then, yeah... I uh, don't know if we're going to play Molten Blast, but it's not very good, so. So we have a ton of creatures. The question is, what are we cutting? Um, um, let's see, so 20 creatures, a lot of them. So what cards am I willing to cut? I think I need my 5-drop here just to have the extra flyer. Um, Deadly Alliance is definitely staying in the deck. Um, so we could cut a Shave a Scorch Rider. It's more like a 6-drop more than anything else. Now the question is, do I shave one Scorch Rider or one Rock Slide Sorcerer? How many Wizards do we have? Four Wizards, so not a ton. Um, but it does have some decent upside. We do have the Cinderclasm, Deadly Alliance, Subtle Strike, Inordinate Rage, and Blood Chief's Thirst. Which can uh, pump the Rock Slide Sorcerer. And we do have a bunch of Warriors in the early game, so it's not like we need 
the extra Scorch Rider, like eight Warriors. So I could see myself shaving a Scorch Rider since it's kind of expensive. Um, could also see myself shaving the Marauding Blight Priest, although it does serve as a Cleric. We just don't have too much synergy with it. We only have like the Malakir Blood Priest, which can maybe get a drain off, and our threes are quite stacked, including the weapons. So it might be reasonable to cut a Blight Priest, even though, again, we do are lacking Clerics in this deck. Um, I can definitely see it being shaved, since we do have a bunch of threes already. And then the rest of the twos, I think, are fine. Um... Yeah, and I do like the Fissure Wizard just as a way to help us loot later on. How good is a Sneaking Guy? Sneaking Guy plays well to some of our two drops here. Especially giving us some evasion. Um, and if we're playing double Sneaking Guy, I can see the um, option of shaving a land and going 16. Since, again, like if we flood out in the late game, we end up in 17. If we do play 17 lands, there's a chance we could flood out, which does happen occasionally. And if we end up like top decking like sneaking guide, it's not a very good blocker. Although it's decent in the late game still, maybe if one of our two drops survive, we can leverage evasion. But other than that, maybe I'm still fine running 16. Like we don't have a ton of mana sinks besides maybe ambusher and sneaking guide. But if they end up getting killed, it's like, you know, what's the point of even um, playing 17 lands then? Most of these creatures are just better to just cast on curve. Ravager's Maze, I guess, is a mana sink that can be moved around, but I don't want to spend my turns moving around. This deck is looking to mostly curve out, develop the board full of creatures. So I think this is a deck. How good is Cinderclasm? A lot, a decent amount of creatures survive it. Um, let's see, the the Teeter Peak Ambushers survive it. Um, I guess the Expedition Champions, the Night Runners survive it. Um, the Rock Slide Sorcerer, Scorch Rider survives it, and the Scion. So a decent amount survive, but also a decent amount die to it. So I'm not sure if I even want this in the deck, to be honest. Could a Molten Blast just be better? Potentially. Um, I don't think we're playing Tormenting Voice, although it is card advantage, but if we're going to be running 16 lands, I think we should be fine without it. don't think we're playing Triple Teeter Peak Ambusher. The Fissure Wizard at one toughness gets punished. I think only one copy is fine. Could play a Sizzling Barrage, actually, which isn't too bad. Um, since we're not really like a control deck, the Cinderclasm isn't going to be amazing, although it can get some spicy two-for-ones at times. But we're better off maybe having the Sizzling Barrage or the Molten Blast, I think, over it. Uh, Molten Blast is kind of clunky at three man, and we do have a bunch at three, so I'm not sure about it. Maybe we just throw in the Sizzling Barrage and test it out. Because we're mostly going to be attacking, so if the opponent gets a block off, we can at least maybe deal 4 damage to something and kill it. So I don't actually hate the Inornit Raid, I mean the Sizzling Barrage, since it can be awkward having Cinderclasm and then a bunch of our creatures in the board, and then it just ends up wiping our, our, our whole entire board. So yeah, I could see using the Sizzling Barrage, and it's another instant to go along with the Rock Slide Sorcerer. So 18 creatures, 6 non-creatures seems fine, and then slightly favoring red. Um, do I keep it even? Probably not. I think it's fine just keeping it 9-7 here. We do have double black for the Scion, but that's turn 5. We don't have a lot of black early game cards. This is, I guess, a 4 mana removal spell that needs double black. But we can still cast it early on and kill something early. So I think something like this could be okay. And then, yeah, we'll try it out, see how it goes. And, uh, yeah, another Rakdos party deck. The picture. Uh, this time, what do we want our picture to be? Um... <laughs> Maybe just um, Night Runner here, since we picked up two copies. Uh, we have a lot of warriors to enable the champion, so I don't actually hate it. Four wizards, five rogues, and two clerics. And yeah, we do have a bunch of early game creatures, so we just need to hit our three trop and we should be fine. Our three lands. And then hopefully we don't uh, get mana screwed or flood. Otherwise, what would be the second cut from this deck? Maybe the Expedition Champion. But, I mean, what else would I play over it? Like a Molten Blast, potentially? Like, it's possible I might need a second removal spell on turn 3. Since, again, we're lacking interaction. Like, this is situational. Sorry, this is situational. This needs an attacking creature. This doesn't deal enough. This needs enough party members. So we are lacking removal, so I could see also the option of just throwing in the Molten Blast, although very clunky, and just shaving a 3-drop. And I, I do need to shave a 3-drop. Maybe I do just shave the Night Runner here. Since the Expedition Champion can hit pretty hard. Although, we do have a bunch of Warriors. And we might need the extra Rogues. Um, the Night Runner is also not bad. 
Um, I mean, although the Night Runner doesn't hit as hard as I want it to, and it's not like we're lacking creatures to grant evasion to. The Night Runner, yeah, it's just a three mana two three, which is not a very good, not a very exciting body compared to like a four three. So maybe we just shave the Night Runner here, and then again we're just playing the Molten Blast for an extra removal spell, and we still have seventeen creatures. So yeah, our deck seems pretty solid here. Some are creatures, and then these are the non-creature spells. And this is 16 lands. I could also, um, let's say if I shave a sneaking guy. No, I don't want to shave it because otherwise I'll be adding a, a much more expensive card, which doesn't seem great. So yeah, we'll, we'll try this out um, and uh, see how it performs. Opening hand, no red mana. I think this is a mulligan. Okay, we finally got red mana. Um, I could ditch a sneaking guide since I do have... Um, because I don't really need two copies, honestly. And we do have Ravager's Mace, which can prevent... Which can provide a bit of evasion. I think it's going to be a lot more of an overperformer than sneaking guide. Um, although I could turn one sneaking guide into sneaking guide, but that doesn't seem very good. So, let's just ditch a sneaking guide. Can turn one, play one, and hopefully we can get a third land to curve out with... One plays a planes. Okay, so we do need a third land in order to make this deck work, but we can at least get him for one. There's only practice tactics as instant speed. There's no flash creatures in white, so I can definitely afford to attack for one here. But if we do miss a land drop, we're going to be pretty far. So hopefully we don't get punished for running 16 lands. And we got a land drop. Excellent. So now what? Um, could play Ravager's Mason again, but I think that's a little bit too... Uh, too much work. I could play Electromancer, but it doesn't do anything. Um, so maybe just play the Night Runner since it does can hold off the one two, and we'll see. Go. Next turn we can decide to move the Ravager's Mace around. Maybe Night Runner can get in and hit it, give us a land drop. Hopefully, land drop would be pretty nice next turn too, since I would be able to play Ardent Electromancer into the Mace. So opponent's able to now, um, okay, so I don't really want to trade for this. Um, if I trade for this, what happens? Nah, there's a chance I could maybe get a Swamp and then maybe, um, play Electromancer into Ravager's Maze. So I think I'm fine taking three here. Maybe we can trade for it later. Unfortunately, no lands. Mm. So I could just play the Ravager's Maze attack. And then hopefully get a land drop. I mean, I don't like it because I'll be taking a ton of damage back in the meantime. Otherwise, I could just play Expedition Skulker and just pass. Maybe that's fine, and hopefully I can maybe eventually get a land and um, get this Ardent Electromancer um, going. So he attacks with both. I guess I'm fine maybe blocking the Electromancer, since it doesn't have Trample in case he has a combat trick. Um, I could just trade here, which I don't mind, so... If I block here, it does shrink down the, the bug catcher, so I think this is okay. Although he does have a warrior on the battlefield, which is also pretty annoying. So do I just trade both? Maybe I just need to hope to get lucky and, um... Uh, maybe... I mean, I guess the Electromancer can trade for this next turn. So I think that's fine, and I can take three. You could see a practice tactics, no tactics, okay. So land isn't bad, so now what we can do is we can play the Ardent Electromancer. And then I guess I can play the Ravager's Mace, but the question is who do I equip onto? Mm, so, mm. Maybe I just equip onto the Sneaking Guide. And just stay back, hopefully. Just in case he kills the Electromancer, I have an extra blocker to trade for the 4-3. So yeah, I think that's fine, and then hopefully it, we might move it around. Since I'm kind of on the defensive here, since the opponent has a lot of uh, very aggressive creatures. So yeah, I think this is okay. Scavenge Blade, so now I guess I'm forced to trade off for this 3-2. I think I have to trade here with everything, um, so now what? 
this can block, and I guess this can block. And then hopefully I can, um... Do I double block this, though? Let's say he has a practice tactics. I mean, maybe I just bait it out here. The Night Runner can at least maybe gain me some card advantage. So I think I'm blocking like this. Could see an inordinate rage here. Okay, resolute strike. Not as bad. And but we're still trading at least. And this is still just a 4-3. Okay, can attack. Um play the Scion. Although he could just equip here, but it's not like I have any good blocks, so let's just attack here. And tier B ambusher here. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll play the ambusher here and then equip instead. Although, I guess I could just pump and trade, never mind, so that's fine. Skyclave Apparition, okay. I guess I'll be taking some hits here. I guess he's going to exile that instead, that's fine. Um, I don't, I'm not a big fan of Skyclave since I, I'll eventually just get back my creature. But yeah, I guess I'll trade for this here because it's a pretty good trade if he decides to attack. Yeah, this is definitely a block and trade. Can't afford to take damage forever. And I still get back the Night... I mean, I don't get back a Night Runner, but I do get back a... Um, I do get a 3-3 here, which is fine. So I just need to make sure the opponent runs out of resources here. Shepherd of Heroes is quite good. He can't really attack with it. Um, so now what... Um, I guess I need to eventually block this, so I could just Night Runner here, play land. Um, do I need to be aggressive here? So if I attack for 5, he goes to 14, he's going to attack me back for how much? Um, 7, so he has a 2 turn clock. So I'm not sure if I can even attack here, because I'll be taking too much damage, so we'll just stay back. Well, it might just move the blade to the Skyclave Apparition, and I might just have to take it since I need the Flyer to hold off the Shepherd. So we'll see. Although there's now Song Mat Treachery, so... 7, 8, 9. I guess I can still take it here. Since I need the extra blocker, and yeah, the Blood Priest is quite nice to pick up here since it will allow me to drain a bit. Um, so this is a 6-4, um, so now what? So this can block the Shepherd of Heroes, and this can also block the 2-2, so maybe it's better to move the Mace onto the Bug Catcher now, and I can now attack. I don't think I can afford to go all out, since the opponent um, can just swing back for lethal, so definitely need to play it safe here, trade off for the Shepherd, which I'm fine with. And then I can keep swinging in with the Bug Catcher and still keep the 2-1 back on defense. Okay, that's a good one. Hmm. Um, so yeah, it's probably not lethal if I attack. Okay, if he equips a Blade, I'm just dead. So maybe I'm just forced to just equip and just attack with both. And hopefully he blocks. He takes it. So yeah, good games. Unfortunately, uh, opponent managed to outrace us, but it's fine. We still hit our land drop on 3, so I'm at least happy with that. But yeah, not bad play from the opponent. Alright, let's keep playing. Um, I could just ditch the Scion. I mean, it's a fine keep. It's not by any means amazing. A Coom Hellhound, so this isn't going to play very well with the Fidger Wizard. However, a 2-drop can just block it. So I'm definitely going to maybe play out the Teeter Peak Ambusher on turn 2. Next turn I can decide where now I want to cast the Fissured Wizard to um, try to hit my land drop. But we'll see. Hmm. Although I don't mind just having the um, Fissure Wizard out to trade for the um, Ambusher. 
So I'm hoping he doesn't have a second party member here, and I just I can just cast the Teeter Peak Ambusher here to block. Could see a roll eruption, but I think he would have used that on the Fissure Wizard anyways. Another bug catcher, so nothing. Okay, so now maybe I do need to just cast the Fissure Wizard, and what creature do I discard? Um, maybe discard a Scion, since it's kind of expensive and clunky. Even though it's a flyer, it's just not... We do need to hit our land drops in this deck, so we'll say go. Can trade for one bug catcher. Maybe if we get land, we can kill the second one with the Molten Blast. Oh, again, yeah, we're facing against another aggressive opponent. So it's not going to be very easy. We do have an Inor Rage on defense. Second Teeter Peak could be fine, though. Just develop our creatures. Say go. Uh, I guess I'm forced to double block one of them. There could be an Inordinate Rage. But I think I go for it here. Since, I guess if he has an Inordinate Rage, um, it's st he, I can still, um, he only kills kills one of them. So I think I'm doing this attack. So could see an Inordinate Rage, could see another Sizzling Barrage. But that's, but this is fine, I think. Yep. That's not gonna, that's only gonna kill one. So I'm still fine with this exchange. Fine still taking two. Now we got our land going, can keep up Molten Blast, um, can Ravager's Maze, I think I'll keep up my instances here. It, it would be nice to have the Sorcerer out to ping out the Akum Hellhound, but we'll see. He could also have a Pump Trick. So Par Paratactician is quite scary, although it's only a Warrior, so I could still kill it end of turn so we'll see so hmm, I could just use the I could just pump the uh, teeter peak ambusher and kill one of his two drops if he wants to be that aggressive but I guess this moment blast is just better take out the pair tactician and yeah still a clunky removal spell but now we can at least develop the rock slide sorcerer and ping out the hellhound eventually so you go yeah so opponent's running a bunch of these bug catchers which is better with a secondary party member but unfortunately, um, he doesn't have a secondary party member, so kind of getting punished here. Hopefully, your opponent doesn't have removal for this, because it's nice value just killing this for free. By using an instant. Probably has removal. That would suck, unfortunately. Scavenge Blade, another one. Hmm, so had we had the Molten Blast, this would have been better. But I guess we're, we're taking three here, unfortunately, or four. I don't think I'm blocking, since I could just keep up my instances instead. So yeah, next turn, I guess we can keep up Deadly Alliance and also um, the Inordinate Rage. We'll see. Um, I could just attack with the Teeter Peak Ambusher. But this might disincentivize an attack if I can have a pump up. So yeah, we'll just say go. See what the opponent does. Of course, there is going to be a land trigger on the stack, so... Uh, if he does have a land, that could be pretty annoying. But I think I can maybe ambush with an Inordinate Rage and kill the Bug Catcher. And still keep up the Deadly Alliance, which is quite nice. Land trigger on the stack, maybe we just in our Delhi Alliance now, or maybe it's fine letting it resolve this turn. And maybe we can still two for one the opponent by using Alliance and the Inordinate Rage. Move the blocks. Now we can cast the Inordinate Rage here. Rock Slice Sorcerer is going to trigger. I can still ping the Knight, the Bug Catcher here. And if the opponent has another instant, we can still kill the Bug Catcher. And yeah, nice two for one here. And I can cast a Sneaking Guide. Um. Um, yeah, I guess I'll Ravager's Mace here since he's most likely not going to block, and I think I start going to town. 
because I do need to kill this opponent eventually, so... Hopefully I can eventually attack, force the opponent to block, and then Sizzling Barrage take out the Akum Hellhound. So hopefully that's a good creature. Maybe I can oops and maybe um, bait the opponent into blocking. Or an Electromancer, okay. Um, so I could just move this. But I, I guess I, I would need enough mass, so I guess we can just attacking. Oops, the opponent. So yeah, let's just go for it. Yeah, this is kind of weird for the opponent to be thinking, but now we can use Sizzling Barrage here. Ping, take out the Akum Hellhound. And yeah, we can get him for 5 at least. And yeah, I guess this could be a two-turn clock. I guess this is uh, this could be lethal next turn. Um, so, I mean, the opponent also just has the blade, which is a two-turn clock. So I do need to top deck something good. Maybe another warrior. And this is lethal, so just basically a top deck here. And hopefully I can get it. We'll see. And a warrior it is, so yeah. So yeah, good games. Or he's just... So it came down to a top deck. And we managed to get there, so yeah. That was pretty lucky, but the opponent also was really close with the Scavenge Blade, but we managed to get some pretty nice value with the Sizzling Barrage. But again, it shows that the Sizzling Barrage is not very good, unless you're being, um, unless you're the aggro player, which we are trying to be, I hate to say, but the last two couple opponents are the ones being the most aggressive. So in case we see any more aggro, I'll decide whether or not I want to side in the Cinderclasm over the um, Sizzling Barrage. But typically speaking, this is a pretty mid-range format, so there should be some pretty um, slow controlling decks in this set. But, you know, if we keep seeing more aggro, then we'll definitely side in the, um, the um, Cinderclasm. Um, no red land man's mana. Like, imagine how good this hand would be if we had red mana, but unfortunately, never lucky. But now we have red mana, so I think this I think this is a keep. Um, do we ditch the pump spell? Um, how greedy do we get? Maybe we just get greedy and ditch the land. Are we on the play? Because I do like both of these, honestly. So yeah, let's get greedy. Maybe we can ditch the land. And leave the sneaking guide. And hopefully we don't get punished for doing this. And there we have it, a land, so excellent. Can now curve out into Ravager's Mace. And we're also on the beatdown, so not bad. Just need to keep punching against the opponent. So, could see a Flash Rogue next turn, maybe we can... Maybe the 1-3 uh, Flash guy can come in. But if he does have it, I don't mind using the Inornate Rage to get rid of it. Although he does have Feed the Swarm here. Okay. It's okay, Teeter Peak Ambusher is fine. I could just play Ravager's Mace, though. Um, next turn, we can play Teeter Peak Ambusher. Although, yeah, I don't care about getting him for 2. Let's just get him for 1. Next turn, we can Ravager's Mace and hit for 3. Or keep, use a Teeter Peak Ambusher to pump. But maybe a blue-black control deck from what I'm looking at. A Vanquish the Weak, okay. So blue-black control it is. This is the type of opponent that has um, all the removal spells. Um, keep land in hand in case of um, acquisitions experts. Could see a subtle strike. But I'm running 18 creatures, so I should be able to find more, hopefully. Highborn Vampire, don't care about that, it does hit hard, but uh, I can still afford to attack. And uh, Inor Rage isn't going to do much, so we'll just get him for two, say go. Could have Inor Rage just to get the Scry off, don't know how desperate that is, but I might need this Rage to maybe play defense or aggro, depending on the circumstance, so we'll see. If he does play a secondary creature, I'm probably going to use the Inor Rage, um, although that can't really block, so it's going to take a while. So we'll just say go. Another land. Mm. 
Yeah, that's not looking too good. Let's just move the combat attack. And then maybe I decide to use it next turn. Maybe use it now, but he does have two mana open, so I am suspicious, so we'll say go. And yeah, this is a strange circumstance where we're flooding with 16 lands, so it does happen. Pulling can mill the golem next turn. But yeah, sometimes you can use card advantage in a deck like this, we'll say go. And yeah, still flooding, so I guess we're going to use a scry here and hopefully we don't get blown out. Yeah, we'll use the rage. And might not resolve here because he could have a removal spell. But yeah, this is what happens when you go 16 lands and the Hagra's mauling. Yeah, I think this is just GG's. I can't get a, get a single scry off. The opponent's attacking me for 4 per turn, I'm flooding out really badly. So yeah, just another um, unfortunate game of Magic, but it is what it is. So do we just run Tormenting Voice in the deck? I mean, I don't actually hate it. Um, but then again, we are running 16, but I, it, I guess this that game was just another rare circumstance where we just ended up flooding, which is really unfortunate. So I guess we'll just give it a shot again. Sometimes in Magic you just aren't lucky and things like this do happen, so there's not much I can do. Alright, Bugcatcher and the Night Runner. Okay, finally a good hand we can keep. Reclaim the Waste, so maybe three colors. But yeah, Bugcatcher on turn two is always excellent. Followed by a rogue, so we can hit pretty hard. I see a feet to swarm here. Nectar pod, that's fine. Um, yeah, and we can curve out here. Two drop in the three drop in the four drop, finally. He can block the two three. But we can still keep getting in for three. So yeah, that's another problem. Night Runner, it just not, it doesn't line up well against one three. So I'm fine cutting one copy, since two copies might be a little bit hard unless you have, um, you can get the sneaking guide always on turn one. This card's fine. I don't really care if he's going to be aggressive with it. I mean, he could have instant speed landfall. But I think the royal is three mana, so I guess I'm fine just taking five. Honestly, it's not a big deal. Um, so, huh? I could just play the Sneaking Guide. Scorch Rider could attack next turn. The opponent can block this. I mean, this is the most mana efficient, and then I can curve on the Scion and attack for four, so I think it's fine casting this, and next turn I can attack with both Warriors, and we'll say go. So yeah, the Skyclave Pickaxe providing some defense for the opponent. Actually, actually he's a survivor, but he's mostly going to have to keep this back on defense, and now there's a Nissa, so... Not a bad card. I am the voice of Zendikar, but we can still. My will the question is, do I block it? The Probably not. Come to my aid. Uh, let's see. I can play land. I can cast a Ravager's Mace, which does kind of maybe prompt the opponent to chump. Um, otherwise, what does Scion do? Sci I can Scion. He can trade here and 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 chump, which I don't like. So maybe Ravager's Mace is the better call. And the question is, which one do I attach it onto? Um, maybe on the Scorch Rider, because he could double block it. 
yeah, sure, let's just do this. And then what we can do is we can attack Nissa and send this to the face, I think, and then maybe offer to trade. Actually, this is still, never mind, this is still a 3-2, so he does need to double block um, this Scorch Rider to keep Nissa alive, which isn't ideal. So nice 2-for-1 here, so yeah, I think this is fine. We can still give evasion to the bug catcher next turn. So he could get a creature out with his minus ability. Or he can just plus and get a land, which I'm fine with as well. Because I do need to kind of kill this. This is only player, so it's not going to exile if I attack the Planeswalker. I guess he's just going to bring back the 3-5, which I don't care too much about. I mean, it does block pretty nicely. But we can just put on the mace. I mean, we can just make something unblockable, put on the mace, and attack if we get a land. So, uh, so in, in our rage isn't bad. I can just use this to get past... The nectar pod. So um, yeah, this is how, how much is this going to be? A three two. So yeah, I could just attack here. Um, send a bug catcher at Nissa. Send two at him, and we'll see. Decide what the opponent wants to do here. And I don't think there's any trick unless it's Marasa. Growth that can deal with this. Sizzling barrage is not bad too, since we're going to be aggressive. Just having a nice four mana removal spell is quite nice. And then yeah. Match to take out the opponent's threats. This is four mana, so just say go. Opponents out of threats. I mean, and blockers, so we should be good. Relic Golem is kind of a weird card in this deck, but that's fine. We should be able to just beat down here. Yeah, this is more for like a blue black mill deck. He could have a rabbit bite, so he could just be using this to fight. Don't care about that, that's fine. So go. We can now play out the Scion and then attack with both. And we should be able to close this out unless the opponent top decks a good remove top deck multiple good removal spells. Core Blade Master, I guess if the Skyclave pickaxe could be a solid combo. But I might just attack into it and use the barrage, honestly. Uh could Deadly Alliance actually. But I think the Sizzling Barrage is better, so I could just move the Mace, which is 4 mana, so not enough to quite act, use the Sizzling Barrage. So I could just attack here and kind of feign that I maybe misplay, but he's mostly going to block. And now I can use the Sizzling Barrage for value, get this card out of the way, which isn't very good. So I'd rather use that than the Deadly Alliance, honestly. So I think we have this game locked, so yeah. So yeah, against this opponent, definitely better to have the Sizzling Barrage as opposed to the uh, the Cinderclasm. So it's definitely pretty situational, but I think the Cinderclasm is still a pretty solid card. Sizzling Barrage, not as much, but in my deck it's a lot better. So yeah, currently 2-2, two and two, not an amazing start, but I think we're fine. Just keep playing. Opening hand, not bad, one drop, two drop, and then Ravager's May seems quite good, and we do have like a rogue to pump the bug catcher, so it seems great. And then in the late game, Teeter Peak Ambusher and Sneaking Guide can be a nice combo if we have enough mana, so it seems, seems like an easy keep. Opponent's on the play though, so yeah. 
Hopefully no Blight Blade on turn 1. I might just trade off for the Blight Blade, honestly. Since it can be a pretty annoying creature. And we do have like a 3-drop here and a Mace to Grand Evasion. So I could just trade here, honestly. Um, I do lose out on the Rogue, but I think it could be pretty solid if I go for it. Buying Gecko is pretty good. So I can't really attack, but if he attacks, I'm trading. So yeah, I guess it's the Bug Catcher here. And hopefully he doesn't kick too many amazing spells. Don't think I want a Night Runner and attack. I could trade for this, but it's better off to start granting evasion. I could Ravager's Mace instead, so I don't think I'm double blocking here because it does imply some weird trick. So I think I'm fine taking two, and hopefully he doesn't play too many kicker spells. Blue Green Kicker is usually where you want this, but that's fine. Um, so now what? Um, could just develop the board. Um. Could just play the Skulker to maybe trade, and that's just a better blocker. Although I could, ra I rather double spell next turn. I could just use a Ravager's Mace, keep the Sneaking Guide on defense. Hmm. Let's just play the Night Runner. Maybe we can afford to take three, and then um, at least this holds off the two-two unless the opponent really has a annoying pump trick. So I'm fine taking three here. Next turn we can double spell at least. Paratactician is going to be 3 toughness, so... Um, still don't know what to do here. I could just attack and trade. I think it's better off just doing this and then we can play the long game, use a sneaking guide as our win con. Because this Blight Blade is being pretty annoying here. So if he attacks with both, I'm probably blocking with the Skulker, taking three, and I can keep up the pump ability on the Ambusher and still like use activate the Sneaking Guide on the Night Runner to get some card advantage. So I think that's the game plan. You can see a removal spell here, and that in that case, I, would, would I mind double blocking? I guess I don't mind. So, hitting his land pockets, McKinney Ox is going to start tapping things down. So, also quite scary. Hmm. So, this turn, what can I do? I can make something unblockable, play out Ravager's Mace, or I can just Ravager's Mace now. And attack. Um, maybe I just play the Scorch Rider and say go. Maybe that's just better, and then we'll just, again we'll just keep playing the long game. The opponent can just play his land drops, tap something down, but I still should have a decent amount of blockers to play defense with. So maybe that's just the game plan. We just want to just get into a board stall, and then eventually just make sure we can trade everything off and not die. So he's tr he's tapping down the expedition skulker. So we're de we're definitely I, I'm definitely trading for this McKinney Ox, but he could also have a pump trick. So I'm not sure here, um, so this is definitely blocking here, and then I guess I can maybe do some sort of double block. I guess I can block like this. Since this is not a really good blocker, I might as well block like this. And then, yeah, hopefully he doesn't have any annoying pump tricks, which he probably does. Okay, so that's not bad. Alright, got some decent trades off. The McKinney Ox is dead. I could just attack here and use a Sizzling Barrage, which I don't mind. Um, yeah, I could just attack with all, use Sizzling Barrage. I guess it's going to be a little bit too obvious. He's mostly going to trade for the Expedition Skulker. So what I could do is I could just make... Yeah, I guess I could just make this creature unblockable. And then kind of surprise him with the Sizzling Barrage by attacking with both of these. Hopefully he just... I don't care which one he blocks with. Now we can use the Sizzling Barrage at least to at least get this out of the way, and the trample damage will still happen, so... Still gonna take three, the Skulker can trade for the Marasa Brute. So now we got kinda have our win con assembled. 
I can still take two. Although trading isn't bad here. But probably still fine taking two. And maybe we can still Ravager's Mace and try to win the game. And that's excellent. Nice top deck. Yeah, I guess I don't mind a Ravager's Mace here. This is going to deal a ton of damage. So I guess I'll move on to Bug Catcher anyways. I know, as he, I know as he, it has evasion, but this is just going to hit really hard. And I can still play defense here, so... I could, I could go for a two-for-one, which I don't mind. Yeah, let's try that. Let's go for a two-for-one here. I can still pump the Teeter P Ambusher. I guess... I guess I could just move the blade, but nah, let's just move the combat. Maybe it's fine attacking with both. And then I can still pump the Teeter P Ambusher. He's forced to maybe double block this to stay alive, so maybe this forces some sort of trick from the opponent. And which one would I rather kill? I think Divine Gecko first. And I can just activate the Ambusher here. Hopefully the opponent doesn't have a chain of removal spells. That would be pretty annoying. They could have a pump trick here, but that's fine. Um, I still kill it, I think, because it's... Actually, I don't. So that was not a good block for me. Didn't expect this to happen, but that's fine. Hopefully I can leverage enough evasion to close out the game next turn. So, should have ordered the Marasa Brute first, but I didn't expect this to happen. I should have maybe at least calculated. Since I knew this was going to get a counter if he played a kicker spell, but I mean... Honestly, I think we're fine here. Unless the opponent has some removal. And I, I don't think a single practice tactics is going to do it, so... Um, and I also have Deadly Alliance up, so I can just easily give this unblockable, attack and pump, and we should be fine. And this is lethal, so, yeah. So three and two, let's keep this up. Alright, we do have a turn to Fissure Wizard, maybe leading us, which, you know, is okay, so I'm hoping I can get some lands here. Otherwise, we might have to discard maybe um, Blood Priest, or just discard this Molten Blast, which doesn't seem too effective, And but we should have removal of the Spark Mage and the Deadly Line, so I'm hoping we can maybe um, get our mana going. At least this can maybe trade off for the Bug Catcher. Alright, let's play the Fissure Wizard here, and then what do we discard? I don't mind a Molten Blast, actually, just to have some interaction. This could be okay as well, but we don't have a lot of Warriors. Um, wizard, Cleric, I mean, we could assemble a full party. So just between these two, I think, for sure. Um, yeah, the Champion could maybe go, because a Molten Blast, we could eventually just, just kill it with... We can eventually use Molten Blast to maybe kill an equipment or take out the Bug Catcher. So that's fine. Or an Electromancer, okay. So might just keep a Molten Blast for next turn. I'm fine trading this. Okay, so he's attacking. So I think I'm willing to trade here. It's pretty good for me. So we'll just do that. Next turn, play land. I might just Molten Blast this main phase, honestly. To play around Pump Trick, and I will. This does slow the opponent down, so happy I kept the Molten Blast since the uh, 4 mana 2-3 three, three wouldn't have done much. If he wants to pump, he wants to use up his whole turn, that's fine. So the Seagate Banner is also pretty annoying here. 
Um, so let's see. Hopefully I can find black mana, and there we go. Black mana is excellent. Although I can't double spell, so I'm probably forced to play the Night Runner here, and then um, next turn play the Spark Mage, take out the 1-2. And another Swamp would be excellent too, so I can maybe eventually start setting something up. But yeah, we're just going to keep this back. Um, if the Banneret attacks, I'm going to be quite suspicious, so I'm not sure if I'm going to block it. But we'll see. I could also just curve out with the 2-drop and then save the Thundering Spark Mage. That's pretty good. So I can at least block 1, probably block the Seagate Banneret here. So I'm going to take 2 here. So yeah, I guess the Thundering Spark Mage is not going to be super effective, so we'll see. So land is good, so now what can I do here? Um, I can play Expedition Skulker and Blood Priest, or... I guess Expedition... I guess I can Blood Priest and keep up Deadly Alliance. And maybe set up some sort of ambush, which could be pretty awesome. Although I don't get a full drain, I think it's fine. Draining for two. And then keeping Deadly Alliance is quite nice, and we'll see go. Next turn we can decide to Spark Mage and deal three to something. We can still keep up the Deadly Alliance to take out the Kargan War Leader if the opponent goes for um, a full pump. So we'll see. Um, so yeah, we could. So now what? Um, so if he pumps the Seagate Banner, he gets to kill something here. So I think we're double blocking like this. Maybe forcing the opponent to pump the Seagate Banneret. Mm, hopefully he doesn't order the Blood Priest first. So he's ordering it like this, so now what we can do is we can punish him, kill out the War Leader. The opponent does get the pump, but it's not enough to... But he ordered it incorrectly, so this is nice. And then we can take out the Ambusher here, and then hopefully we should be smooth sailing. And yeah, might as well attack first, in case I hit the land drop, so let's go. I mean, I could just attack first. But yeah, we got a land drop anyway, so not bad. And then we can play the Skulker. There's the Onduin version at 7, but I highly doubt a red-white aggro deck would run that card. So I think we're fine just playing everything out. And now we establish Tempo and Board Presence. Can still attack with a Skulker here. Although, might want to keep that back. Um, yeah, this could pump, so maybe I'm forced to keep it back here. Um, let's just play Mountain. Maybe you shouldn't have played Mountain, just say go. Because this card can get out of hand. Maybe you need to do some sort of double block if the opponent tries something here. Uh, Outrider is going to grow his creature, so yeah, this could be his turn to get in a huge attack. But again, we do have Skulker to play on defense, so I'm fine with a double block if the opponent goes for it. And we have our own opposing T P Ambusher, so not bad. And we'll play out land so we can pump twice, essentially. So just need my sneaking guys to maybe leverage some evasion. Hopefully the opponent doesn't top deck any flyers. Relic Robber, although, yeah, that doesn't have any evasion. So we're still going to keep the game on defense for now. Say go. Ardent Electromancer. Um, so I could attack here. The Electromancer can still trade off for something. Um, he's definitely going to trade for the Ambusher. So I feel like the Skulker can maybe get in. Although Skulker is pretty nice just holding everything back. Um, but so is everything else. So yeah, yeah, let's just attack. And maybe send in the Ambusher. I guess the Ambusher is fine. If he doesn't block, we can pump in a million. So this kind of forces the opponent to react. And that's fine. We can trade this off. Uh, yeah, we should have enough to play the Art Electromancer anyway. So this is fine. This can at least trade off. We can cast the Electromancer. And yeah, just have another 3 powered creature to hold off the Pair Tactician. And also, Skulker can start blocking the Teeter Peak Ambusher. So, seems fine with me. We have the board advantage. We have two more creatures than the opponent. So, it's just going to come down to top decks. And hopefully, we don't flood out too much. We drew a bunch of lands already. So, Pwn might have a removal spell, but we do have, again, enough blockers to hold everything off. Okay, binding, so he doesn't want me to gain card advantage in case something like that happens.
Ooh, in order rage, so I could just attack with all. What if I attack with all? Block. Block, block. Yeah, I think I'm fine attacking with all, and if he wants to make some blocks, I can just use in order rage, so that's not a bad top deck to take out the Teeter Peak Ambusher, so I think we go for it. I guess it's a 2 for 1 if it blocks my 2 1, but I still want to get this out of the way. And if the opponent wants to swing back, he's just going to take a ton of damage too, so I think this is fine. Fine if this Relic Robber is trading as well. So all these trades are going to happen. I still get a Scry off and I get in for 2, so it's not that bad. Um, but... Um, But it's also not amazing, but I think it's fine. Now we can bomb a land at least. And hopefully the opponent starts flooding too, or doesn't top deck anything amazing. Alright, Power Classic Hellion. Well, that's not bad top deck, so that attack might not have been too good. Since now he top deck a nice 5 drop that can um, start pressuring me. So maybe I shouldn't have been too greedy with the attack and just... Maybe attack with one now, but although now we do have a flyer to kind of outrace him, so not bad. So you go, we can attack for five, you can attack for four. I can still chump if I want to. Punt could also be running 60 lands. Yeah, we'll take four here. We do have a three turn clock, same with the opponent. Hopefully he doesn't have anything, he might not. Okay, sneaking guide isn't bad, we can use that to even chump if we want to, so we'll get him for five. Play the sneaking guy, could also chump with this, which I don't mind. I could just chump since I don't really have anything to leverage evasion with. So I think a chump is fine here just in case he has like a, a pump trick. And then I can still attack and hopefully top deck a creature. Alright, another creature, so we could just attack with both and decide to chump. And I can still pump this and trade for the Hellion, so I don't actually mind just trading. And we got him, yep. So a good series of top decks saved us. And that game was also pretty close too. So yeah, all of our matches have been fairly close. So I guess our red-black deck isn't super broken or anything. It's just solid um, since we we're able to get go toe-to-toe -to -toe with other decks. But yeah, let's keep this up. Alright, um, we do have a 2 drop into 3 drop, seems fine. And also Blood Chief's Thirst in the early game, so not a bad opening hand. Both our colors, so this is kind of kind of like a good opening hand that we're kind of also wishing for. Him. So, yeah, we'll just lead with a mountain just to hide Blood Chief's Thirst. If this was a, like a turn 1 crab, this would have been a pretty solid removal spell.
probably is a one drop guy that mills. Although, if I don't have any creatures, he can't target me and mill me. So yeah, this could be a sign he has the rogue that mills. But overall, so we should keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, not bad. Let's just lead with the Teeter Peak Ambusher. And decide whether or not we want to Electromancer or Expedition Champion, depending on what we draw next turn. Could see a counter spell, maybe a Jory's Disruption. But he's probably holding up priority since he might have the one drop. I feel like he has it since he's holding up a lot of priority. So we're definitely going to play around the rogue that gives Neg 2 Nego since he's just holding it up the whole time. So if I tack and he flashes it in, do I care? I guess I don't mind. Hmm. Okay, so that's pretty annoying. Maybe I'm fine attacking here and then if he blocks, I'll just use Inornate Rage to kill it off, which I'm fine with. So yeah, let's go for it. I mean, there's no harm in blocking, right, opponents? And he just takes it. Okay. Um, Blood Chief's Thirst can't kill it. The Lions can't kill it. So yeah, I think we're just leading with an Expedition Champion, which could attack past this. So. He could kick something, gain some life. Alright, Seafloor Stalker. I think that's okay. Hm. So now what? I think this low mage's familiar is important to get rid of. So if I use the Norit Rage, I can essentially two for one the opponent and still keep up my Expedition Champion. I feel like he does have the Flash Guy, which could be pretty problematic though. Um, so what do I do here? I could, I could, yeah, I could Electromancer, but then I'll lose my mana. So I think it's fine attacking with the 4-3, and even he, if he has a 1-drop, maybe I can still kill the Low Mage's Familiar, which is a very annoying creature that I need to deal with. So if, even if he gets this Neg 2 Neg o, I can potentially, um... I can potentially kill this, which is much more important than killing the Seafloor Stalker. So yeah, he's probably going to flash him in. And let's see, if he gives this Neg 2 Neg o and I use this, it's still going to be 5 power. So I think we order the Low Mage's Familiar first. And uh, do I do it here? I mean, I could just let damage happen and save the Inornate Rage. Because I'd rather just develop the Ardent Electromancer, maybe. So, yeah, we'll just pass priority, see what the opponent does. Yeah, he probably has it, and here it goes. So, it's going to resolve. And then, in response, I can use the Inornate Rage to pump. And, yeah, well, I think we'll keep a Mountain on top. Let me think here. So, next turn, I can Electromancer... Sneaking Guide. Um, still keep up 2 mana. It's not like I need red mana at all. But I might need a second red mana. But yeah, maybe we can bottom the land. Might be too greedy. I don't want to flood out here. Although I should have bottom since he was going to mill me anyway. So I think that's fine. And yeah, this is still alive. So not bad. The Zoroport Duelist. I forgot that this wasn't enough damage. So... Yeah, I should have maybe kept the land on top then, since he milled my Sizzling Barrage, but now I can maybe take this out, which is fine. I can kick the Blood Chief's Thirst and keep up the Deadly Lines instead, which I'm okay with. Just, I guess I can still block. I mean, like... Yeah, that was a weird play from the opponent, so now what? I could I could one-drop in the Deadly Lions. Um, let's say if I play the Ardent Electromancer, I guess that's going to give me two... I guess that's going to give me two party members. So then this would cost, cost how much? So if I play this, what happens? Then I'll have three mana available. This will cost four mana. So yeah, I think I do it here. Giving me the extra mana. And now I can alliance away the cleric so I can develop my board. And then we can attack with both for five. And yeah, the Zorport Duelist not doing an amazing job in this deck. But I should have kept the mountain on top if I wanted to go away. Since I could have the extra sizzling barrage to maybe make a double block difficult for the opponents. I could just kill this. Or I can trade. And I don't mind just killing it, honestly. Yeah, and he still doesn't have any good blocks. Maybe force a chump now, take four. Maybe he has another trick, but no tricks. Okay. 
And then even if he plays like a giant Kazandu Stomper, I can still start giving some of the Night Runner or the Skulker unblockable. That's fine. Uh, let's see. I guess I'll just play Skulker and Night Runner. Trade for the 3 2. Keep, so he doesn't get a good trade on the 4 3, which I think he wants. So we'll just offer the Electromancer here. And he also doesn't, doesn't have a wizard, so he's not going to draw a card. So what is this? A blue, a blue green party deck? So that's kind of funny. Which is definitely reasonable if you pick up like Tajuru Paragon's Lates or a lot of Seafloor Stalkers in green, which do happen, does happen. So this 2 2 can hold off to 7 5, so I don't really care about that much. Um, do I attack here? I can attack with the Expedition Skulker. He's most likely going to block with the Diviner. Um, I, you saw the strike, but yeah, I think I just play the sneaking guide and say go. Or maybe we can set up an unblockable um, Night Runner, start getting in. Or make the Teeter Peak Ambush Room blockable, attack for three or even four. I wouldn't mind putting a counter on the Ambusher since it gives it the extra damage in case I need to leverage evasion and make an attack. Probably see a fight spell here. If he has Rabbit Bite, he might accidentally target the Diviner. I guess he could have the Kicker spell, the Fight Kicker that gains him a ton of life, which is definitely possible as well. Reclaim the Waste, Unkicked, okay. He probably has, has the Fight Kicker spell maybe. So he does want to cast something this turn. So, opponent has a lots of options. Domination. I could just kill it in response. And then put a counter onto one of my creatures. I mean, I guess I'm fine still letting this resolve anyways. And maybe he's crazy enough to attack. Um, let's think here. I think we just say go, maybe. Scorch Rider... So maybe I start getting in there. If he attacks with the Expedition Champion, I can maybe any blocks with it. Then maybe I can kill the Sneaking Guide and put a counter onto it, which can be pretty nice. And then I can start attacking with the Skulker. I could just attack with both of these, honestly. Yeah, let's just let's just go. Uh, yeah, let's just send them both and see what the opponent tries here. I don't mind this block. That's a good. I'm fine with this too. So now what I can do is I can use the subtle strike here, give this neg one, neg one, put a counter here, and this is gonna result in a trade. So then my the rest of my creatures can start getting in there. Got a good game, the opponent at this point. All right, infiltrator can tap rogues and draw cards, but I don't really care. So we'll just attack. Um, yeah, we'll attack with the Night Runner. He can block it, but then I'll get in for four. I can play the Scorch Rider. Or he's just here to rope me. So it's a weird blue-green deck. Usually blue-green wants to stay with the kicker synergy, but it's a kind of like a weird um, deck to be honest. Let's just attack with all. Don't need to analyze too much. He, he definitely needs to block the ambusher. So he's forced to chump it if he wants to survive. I guess he's dead anyways. So now we can just pump this and he's just dead. So yeah, not bad. So kind of climbing up here, five and two, I believe. So just maybe two more wins and maybe we can get our seven and draft some call time finally.
All right, so five and two. Let's keep it up. Keep this up. Just two more wins, and we should be able to get to seven. Hopefully, let's try it and keep it going. Okay, two drop and a three drop I'm into potential four drop maybe seems fine. Looks good, and we're also on the play, so happy to see a, an opening hand like this on the play. Fireblade Charger, no haste though, but our TP ambusher should be able to block it. And if he does equip a weapon, I don't mind blocking it, so then it doesn't become annoying later. Could see a whirl eruption here. Yep. I can still play out the Expedition Champion to block. Mm. Yep, and then we can maybe follow with Goma Vada, Fat Vanguard if we don't get our 4 drop and it should be fine. Stonework Pack Beast. Another Fireblade Charger, so the opponent's going off. Mm, Ravager's Mace is not bad either. I could just attack and if he decides to block, I can use the... Sizzling Barrage, so let's try that. Well, it takes it, so now I can play the Vanguard. And I can even just trade if I want to, or just take it, honestly. Since he's getting him for 4, I'm swinging back for 6. Utility Knife, pretty annoying. Hm. I guess I'll take the 2. I mean, I might as well block the Fireblade Charger here. So then it can only deal too much, too, too to my face. Let's think here. Um, I guess he can get in for three, which I don't mind. And then I can just attack back for six next turn, which is I'm totally fine because he can't block with his Fireblade Charger if I have two warriors. So this is fine, and then I can play land. We can move the combat. I think I'm fine getting him for 6, because 6 is a ton of damage here. And then I can save the, the Rock Slide Sorcerer with the Sizzling Barrage, which is a pretty nice combo. So, not bad. He can't block with this. If he blocks with a Fireblade Charger, I can Sizzling Barrage, ping. So I'm hoping he just passes and does absolutely nothing here. Because next turn can be a complete blowout if the opponent isn't careful. Yeah, and hopefully he does nothing since now I can play land. And I think I'm fine casting the Ravager's Mace onto what? Um, maybe on the Vanguard? Um, yeah, let's just, let's, let's cast the Mace. And let's put it onto... I guess, yeah, we'll, we'll put on the, the Champion maybe. So he would rather... I guess the champion's better at chumping. Uh, hmm, this is interesting. We'll put on a Sorcerer. And then the Fireblade Charger can't block. So this is one of the strange situations where Goma Fata Vanguard is doing a lot of work. So this is probably going to block the Goma Fata Vanguard here. Which I'm totally fine with. And then we can use Sizzling Barrage um, to take it out. Or I can use it on the Fireblade Charger. Does it really matter? Um, let's use it on the Fireblade Charger. And then we can still ping the 2 1. And this is going to only deal 1 to my face. Clone's taking 5. And then, yeah, he's kind of on the back foot here. Morag, well that's a bomb. How do we get past Morag? I guess we have to move the weapon and attack and then force a double block. Because this does give my creature menace. So if I move it onto the um, Expedition Champion, this is going to be 7 power. So he's forced to trade Morag off, which is quite nice. Yeah, we still got him. And this is currently 6-2. So final boss... 
listening in. Hopefully we can get up to seven wins, play some call time draft, and make sure we um, get a nice draft going to show off for our content. And yeah, just try this out. One more win, and uh, let's give this one last shot. Alright, two drop, three drop, seems good. If we can pick up another two drop to ramp with Art Electromancer, that would be amazing since we would be able to hit for three and play something else. Um, that's fine, we can kill that. Didn't have to show them the swamp, but in case there's a acquisitions expert, I guess we could have given them a land anyways. So if we can get a nice two drop going, that would be pretty amazing since this can attack for a four. With the Ardent Electromancer, if there's another party member. We can always just shoot down the Seagate Banneret if something like this occurs. I guess I'll attack first. This is a strange attack, so this does imply he has a trick. Which I'm not blocking, since that's pretty strange. And I should be able to outrace this opponent if he um, wants to be... If he wants to use combat tricks. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, we do have to play the Expedition Champion. Next turn, we can Arden Electromancer into Expedition Skulker or Arden Electromancer into Molten Blast and take this out. So he does have a pump trick. This does imply, I feel like. Paratactician is quite good, so I might just kill that instead. So what I can do here is I, is I can play... Um, I can play this, play the... Our Electromancer, and then yeah, we'll Molten Blast away the Paratactician. Although I do want to Molten Blast, take out the 1-2. I feel like this has to be necessary, I imagine. And then we can attack for 2 at least. And start applying some pressure. So yeah, this card is quite fantastic in the Red Party deck, so that's why I picked it. But opponent also seems to have a pretty good Red-White Party deck. These are two good cards I like. Same with the Expedition Champion, but we'll have to keep the Electromancer back. I could just attack with it still. Ooh, we do have double Expedition Champion. Um, I might just attack with the 3-2 and then play this second main. Since I do want this trade to happen, but if it's not, I guess that's fine. This forces him to stay back. So he just plays land and pass. What happens, I could attack with all three. He can still pump and do some good trades. So might not be advisable to attack. If he does attack with the champion, that does might imply a pump trick. Tazim Raptor, a bit of evasion. Okay, so he doesn't have a pump trick. So he might be forced to just um, trade here, which I'm fine with. So this can block the 3-2, so I don't want that. So I'm fine with the 4-3 trading. I mean, he could also have a dumb... Removal spell at instant speed, which could be pretty annoying, so maybe I just attack with one Expedition Champion. So this would most likely force the block, which I'm fine with, because if he does have instant speed removal... One moment. Kazul's Fury can maybe go face or trade off or something. So yeah, not bad. We have board presence and tempo, but uh, the opponent can easily climb back if he plays enough creatures and removal spells. Skyclave Apparition, okay, that's not bad. Might want to kill something here. I mean, I might want to trade, offer to trade so I can at least get the creature back. Alright, so he's going to get rid of my um, 
Expedition Champion. I still make a 3-3 when this dies. So, maybe I can start being aggressive next turn. I'm hoping the Tazim Raptor attacks. But yeah, he might just stay back on defense here. And Deadly Alliance isn't bad too. Um, so I could just attack and maybe offer a trade for one of these creatures. Yeah, let's just send in all. And I still have the Deadly Alliance up if he wants to try something here. And I, I have it for two mana as well, so if he has a trick, I can blow him out with the Deadly Alliance, so... And yeah, I'm fine pumping. The question is, do I use the Deadly Alliance here? Maybe I can still save it. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of bad since he does have the Kazool's Fury, so maybe I should have used it. Because he could just sack this in response. But maybe he taps off for something large and I need to kill it. To see a roll eruption. Thundering Rebuke, okay, kind of similar. On attack, so he's going to try to outrace me here. I have land, I can attack for two. If opponent tries to attack and pump next turn, I might just fire off the deadly, but we'll keep it in our hand still, just in case there's something. Because I don't want him to use Kazul's Fury in response. Okay, ho ho I'm hoping he pumps here. And then in response, we can kill the, the Skyclave Apparition, and then ambush the Seagate Baron. That's why Skyclave Apparition isn't a good card. Um, it's just, it just gives you a body, which isn't great. And now, yeah, we have lethal, so we can attack with both. And then before blocks, we can just use this on the Skulker. One red isn't going to do much. A spike field hazard isn't going to do anything, so good games. Yep, that's what he had. And yeah, sweet, nice 7-2 and two video. We uh, lost two games in a row early on, but sometimes, again, you just need to play Magic. And sometimes in games of Magic, you just get very unlucky. And uh, you can easily just end up 1-3, even with like a very good deck, or 0-3 with a very good deck. But um, this is an example of a draft where you definitely need... To, it's important in Magic sometimes to just play towards your outs. Um, and yeah, we managed to get to 7 by sticking with the game and not tilting. And, you know, I do tilt, we're not perfect, but had, had I given up and tilted um, around, like, when I was 2-2, two and two, um, I wouldn't have gotten to 7, whereas I still, you know, m maintained my composure, still, um, still um, kept going and, um, and uh, trying to make the best plays as much as possible, and we still managed to get to 7 wins with a pretty uh, decent black-red party deck, and the de deck isn't even broken, by all means, there's not, like, there's no Relic Runners, there's not, like, a million copies of Deadly Alliance. There's no Shatter Skull Chargers. Um, our best card is probably like Deadly Alliance, along with um, Thundering Sp Thundering Spark Mage, maybe Rock Slide Sorcerer, and then the rest of these other cards are fine. I guess Malachar Blood Priest and Bug Catcher are kind of like kind of like our standout cards, and then the rest are just filler. I mean, I guess Blood Chief's Thirst. So yeah, even in a deck like this, um, with not too many, with zero bombs. Just good overall quality cards, a good creature curve. Sometimes you can just get the seven wins, and, and that's quite nice. And I was quite happy making the change, uh, putting in Molten, Molten Blast over Cinderclasm. Although quite clunky against opposing aggro decks is still fine, since there's a lot of two toughness creatures. Um, but yeah, um, overall, our deck is just very medium. I've definitely drafted a lot more better black-red decks than this. But sometimes, again, you just need to um, play towards your outs, and you can easily just get to uh, seven at times. So yeah, um... Let's, um, one moment. Alright, let's crack some packs. And then, hopefully we can, maybe I'll just fire off a Kaldheim Premier Draft, and maybe we can draft something very fun and spicy. So, yeah. Pretend this is Zendikar Rising, pack one, pick one. Um... Nah, this pack is not great. I think the best card in this pack is like either the Veil or a Dauntless Survivor. Uh, maybe go with Veil, since you can always pick these up at common later. Or just go to Rare or Mythic, whatever it is, but probably just a Bayin Veil. Has a nice more dual face land. And yeah, this hand 
this pack also is not exciting. Blood Beckonings you can always get later. I don't like running more than one copy. Ambushers are fine to drop, but better off if you have sneaking guides and if you're party or aggro. Power Classic Hellion I do like, but it is expensive and you can always get one later. Don't want too many copies of these. Same with like Strike. So yeah, probably just Song Mad Treachery. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Nice, another nice seven win video. And that wasn't the final call, um, Zendikar Rising draft. I apologize, but we're definitely going to do a premier draft called Heim now with 15... 1.5k gems and hopefully we can uh, snag a nice six or seven so in the meantime have a wonderful day and uh, take care and bye